Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we have a 1984 Gibson Flying V. These represent the thrash metal era, and that's why these are highly desirable guitars. Now that doesn't make them super expensive, but the hardest thing about these is to find them in original unmodified condition without a Kaler and original Dirty Fingers pickups. I'm always on the search for nice examples like this one, and this is only the second one that I've been able to get my hands on. So these are alder-bodied guitars paired with a maple neck, and some of these will have ebony boards, but most of them have rosewood like this one. But for the most part, these are just pretty basic guitars. This was Gibson's attempt to create a more affordable Flying V. Prior to this guitar in current production, there was the 67 styled V and the new V2, which were both high-end models. And as you can see, these have a lot more going on with them. They have the mahogany body with mahogany neck, rosewood fretboards again, but they had T-top pickups and this huge pick guard on them. These were a lot more expensive back in the day, and nowadays they are very rare and expensive. Even repaired examples will sell for about twice as much as the V that we're covering today. So these were basically just stripped down versions, and that's kind of what appealed to that metal scene. The Dirty Fingers pickups are high output, which makes them great, you know, for screaming leads but they're actually pretty good jazzy pickups as well. And that's because they're very round and transparent sounding. They're not really shrill and nasally when playing them clean. So despite such an aggressive name, they can do more than just metal. Perhaps one of the most interesting things about these instruments is they came in so many different finishes, from white to black and to like this red one here, but there were also rare finishes like Purple Burst and Green Burst, which I came really close to getting very recently, but unfortunately I didn't get to that collection in Michigan in time. There was also a run called the Designer Series where they scribbled on these and sold them like designer creations. Some of those look better than others, so depending on what design you have really depends on the value some of those can be very hard to sell. And then in 2007, as part of Gibson's Guitar of the Week series, they reissued this 1984 style V in a silver burst finish. So overall, these are very interesting guitars, but let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds. <laughs>
know how this instrument sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. The face of the headstock on this one, you have a gold Gibson logo and a blank truss rod cover. That's another thing that differs from that original styled 67V is they don't have that huge truss rod cover that covers half of the headstock with the Gibson logo. Uh, this one does have one replaced tuner. The back just popped off of that one, so I replaced it with a different tuner of the same style. You have a rosewood fretboard here with minimal fretware. Everything's looking good on this one. Now something that's very common on these alder bodies is they'll get this vertical finish checking. This also happens on Karina guitars a lot. I'm not quite sure why this wood does that, but you see it all the time and it is very commonplace. So finding an unchecked example would be uncommon. This one still retains its original Dirty Fingers pickups, which is again, kind of a tough feat. And you have a normal Nashville style bridge and tailpiece. Back the headstock, serial number 82774521. You can see you've got a few dings at the top here. And once again, more finish checking on the back. A nice comfortable 60s neck profile with this one, but no major nicks or dings. The back shows a lot of finish checking once again, and light nicks and dings with some light scratches. The sides also have some nicks and dings but this was definitely a cared for guitar. It's not like they babied it or anything though. You also have replaced Schaller strap buttons. Under black light, everything's looking good on the face of the guitar here. Looks like your knobs might have been replaced. The back also has a nice even glow and the neck is also looking good here. This example does retain its original Gibson case. As with most of these, they're very beat up and hardly even functional anymore. This one, it's super beat, but it still works perfectly fine. You've got two latches there, a locking combo lock, and then a bottom and back latch. The interior is kind of this fuzzy red material. As is common with these, it comes unglued from that little wood piece. And then the backing also comes undone, but once you get all that done, You've got the original broken tuner. It can be fixed, you just have to hammer those little metal tabs down so it'll stay in place. And you also have some original paperwork in there. But other than that, this case is functional. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Gibson 1984 Flying V without a Kaler and original pickups, feel free to check out that link in the description that will take you to the Reverb for Sale ad. Thank you Troglodytes for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.